I just wanted to tell you guys that midlife crisis really sucks because the purchases that you need to make in order to get through it, they're just horrible. Hey, what's up Lawn Care Nuts? Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So today is gonna be one of those kind of videos that's more like a day in the life kind of thing. And I know a lot of you guys don't like that, you don't really care about that stuff, you just want the lawn tips. Just like the title says, this video is gonna be all about Midwest or cool season grass lawn tips uh, going into fall. So if you're here for that content, I'll put a link in the description below where you can skip ahead and get right to the tips. Because I understand, the tip is the most important part. The other thing that I am gonna do today though is provide just a skosh of an update just to kind of give you guys an idea of where I'm at and what videos are coming up and that kind of stuff. So you kind know what to expect over the next few weeks. So here is Frankenstein. Ugh, I started mowing last night and it got dark so I have to blow all this off today and edge. But anyway, here's Frankenstein. Now, uh, Frankenstein is going to get an insect treatment today. Not going to film that, but you know, I'm seeing these brown spots coming in here and uh, I'm seeing a lot of moth activity as well. So something's going on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. The other thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to do an iron treatment on this. Liquid iron. I'm going to do a full video on that. So that's really just getting shot today. I won't actually publish it until next weekend. So that's one of those videos, if you're interested in putting liquid iron on a lawn or what that does and how to do it, that's a video you're gonna wanna subscribe for in the next week or two. And then over here, St. Augustine Grow, today is the day to do my second weed application. So it's been a full 20 days now since I did the application. And if you'll remember, we did blindside versus Celsius. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose how to proceed today with further course of action, because of course the one application didn't kill all the dove weed. So gotta keep going. So today I'll be deciding what I'm gonna do for the next application on each side and continue that experiment. So that video will be published probably in a couple weeks also. I want to go ahead and get the results first so I can do a full video for you. So like I said, I got to film all that stuff today as well as get this video out that I'm going to post either probably tomorrow for you guys with cool season lawns on what you should be doing now that you're coming out of summer and into fall to get prepared and what things you should be looking for. That's today's video that I'm also going to film. I'm going to film that video though and give those tips from a much different location. So let me show you how I'm going to get there. Snapchat here, dude. I think I pissed them all off. All right, so what we're gonna do is you guys ask questions and then I'm gonna put them in my video that's gonna come out tomorrow. So I'm gonna answer them on my GoPro right here, but they're gonna come out in tomorrow's video on the channel. Check out this bomb ass house behind me. It's for sale. I have no idea how much. By the way, check it out. Downtown St. Pete skyline. Pretty. All right, so I took a bunch of questions from you guys on Snapchat. This is gonna be all about fall time lawn tips for those of you guys with cool season grass. So that's really what this is about, is me giving you guys up in the Midwest and up north there, a little bit of love talking about what's gonna start happening to you now that you're coming out of this really long, hot summer. And by the way, let me just say, this has been a record summer. And as far as I say record, I mean it feels like that. Even down here in Florida, it's been super hot, but I know you guys up north, um, from those of you that I talked to, a lot of you are saying, I can't remember a summer this bad. And so because of that, a lot of the stuff that we see coming into September every year is gonna be even worse this year. So you're gonna come out of August now, and most of you, your lawns have been dormant this summer. A lot of you, you know, even, even some of you that are more hardcore, you just weren't able to keep up with the watering or the water bill got too much, or you just couldn't keep things cooled off, and your lawn went into summer dormancy, and that's okay. You let it go in there on purpose, probably. That's what you did, you didn't have a choice. So what's happened is your lawn has been brown all summer, and what that does is it tends to mask real problems that are going on. For example, you might have sod webworm munch action going on inside your lawn, but you can't tell because you can't see brown spots appearing because the whole lawn is dormant brown. Another thing that can happen is you can have, again, disease problems. Dollar spot's been rampant this year, but dollar spot that you just didn't know. Maybe it started showing up in the spring a little bit and then you didn't notice it, you didn't catch it, then your lawn went dormant. Well, those spots being under the super amount of stress that they were, they're not gonna come out of summer dormancy very well. 
And then the other thing that you might have is mechanical damage or foot traffic damage. You know, a, a lawn that's dormant, whether it's winter or summer, really shouldn't be walked on or played on. But then again, in the summer, what are you going to do? Tell your kids not to play in the lawn? Of course they are. And so them stomping on that dormant lawn can also cause areas to die because the crowns get crushed. So all of that presents an opportunity. It presents an opportunity to put together a good strategy to go ahead and get the lawn to recover before Halloween. Believe it or not, one of the biggest opportunities to dominate your neighbors during the year comes at Halloween. Because as you know, most everybody's out with their kids, walking them through on Halloween. And in most places in the US, Halloween, your lawn is still gonna be green. It may not be actively growing or super vigorous, but it's still gonna be growing and it's still gonna be green. And that's really our opportunity for one last time to tell all the neighbors that we dominate them. And they have to come and see it in order to get candy for their kids. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to realize that September is going to be upon you and it's time to get some things done and you're going to go out and you're going to start working on the lawn. The other thing that's going to happen about that same time is you're going to get a little bit of cooler temperatures as well as some rain and so the lawn is naturally going to start coming out of its summer dormancy and start to green up and that's when you're going to notice problems, areas that just don't recover. Now one thing that a lot of you will be concerned with would be grubs and rightly so. I told you I never used to treat my lawn for grubs but that was because it was so vigorous populations never got big enough to really cause an issue. But if your lawn has been dormant during the summer and you are seeing brown spots that's probably the first thing you should do is get into each brown spot and dig around. All you want to do is dig around the edges of the brown spot out about six inches and if that and if there are grubs there you'll find them they look like little shrimp underneath the soil. And the way you treat that is you go and you get a 24 hour grub killer. You can get that at Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever, we, or wherever you want to go. Now there's different chemistry that's being used nowadays. I used to use Dilox and you can still get Dilox and it works great. But I'll put a couple links down in the description below to some other products that you could use that'll go ahead and kill the grubs, you know, within a day or so. The key with all of them though is they have to be watered in. So once you've treated for grubs or at least determined that grubs are not your problem, the next thing you do want to look for are moths flying up because sod webworm can have multiple generations throughout the year and as long as it stays sufficiently warm, they can still be reproducing and still causing damage to the lawn even through September. So if you do see moths flying up, you probably have a sod webworm problem and as I've said before, it's not the moths themselves that do damage, it's their larvae that do the damage. So if you see moths, then that means another generation is probably going to come and you're going to want to go ahead and treat for it. That same 24 hour killer that you use for grubs will also work for sod webworm, or you can also get bifenthrin, which used to be called tall stock. Bifenthrin works really, really good for sod webworm and it kills them pretty quick, but again, gotta be watered in. Now the next reason that you might have brown spots could be from disease. And I'm not gonna really worry about disease into the fall time. We're gonna go ahead and correct disease just by helping the lawn to grow out. And that's where we get to the next step. So the next step is to go ahead and aerate and overseed. Now this is for those of you with clay soil and cool season lawns. Aeration is a must for you this year because of the stress that the lawn's been under. We need to go ahead and open things up and we need to get some good injection of good organic material down into that soil as well as to allow the grass roots to relax a little bit. I've got a video that I did on aeration that I'll link to below, shows you how to use the machine, shows you what everything you want to do. You can go ahead and rent one, they're 40 to $80 for four to eight hours. And I always recommend that you go in and do it with your neighbors so you guys can share the labor and share the cost. As well as keep in mind, you do need a large truck to load it on and it's not a one person job loading and unloading. Another good idea is if you are going to rent the aerator to go ahead and do a double pass. Go this, go horizontal, and then go vertical across the lawn or north, south, and east, west, however you want to look at it. Pull up double the plugs, never hurts. As far as when you can start, you can start as soon as the lawn starts to grow again and you can pull a plug. Now keep in mind, the lawn might start growing again, but if, it, if the soil's too hard and you can't pull a plug that's least an inch and a half, two inches long, then you need to go ahead and water for a few days to soften your ground up and then go ahead and aerate. Remember, the key is we want to pull a plug. So it isn't really about what time of year, it's really about can I pull a plug or not. Right after you aerate, I want you to put down a full application of malorganite, 14.4 pounds per 1,000 square feet, right on top of the aeration. Some people go, does it go into the holes? And yeah, it does. We're not aiming for that. And in fact, you couldn't aim for that. But yeah, a lot of it does go down in the holes, but a lot of it stays up into the thatch layer where we want it and breaks down and just provides a really good starter fertilizer all on its own. As far as weeds, crabgrass, yeah, you're going to have a lot of residual crabgrass and you're going to need to get something to spray on it and you're going to want to kill it. You don't want it to keep growing because it'll grow all the way until the first frost and then drop seeds. 
So since we're gonna be seeding here in the fall, I recommend you use Tenacity as your weed control. It'll kill crabgrass and a lot of other broadleaf weeds, including dandelions, which do have a resurgence in the fall. But the best news is it won't harm your new grass seed. I'll put a link below in the description to where you can pick up Tenacity. It's a little expensive, but it's a pretty low use rate product, so it'll last you a long time. By the way, you should start killing weeds almost immediately. Even if you're not gonna aerate until mid-September, I would recommend you get tenacity and start spraying weeds now as long as you're irrigating or you're getting enough rain and the lawn's starting to try to, self, try to come out of dormancy on its own. Now, if you do have areas that are larger, big bare spots, or areas where you've got maybe tall fescue clumps or something like that, that you're gonna have to do a rehab on, I'm gonna link below to a playlist I did uh, with some friends in Joliet, Illinois, I think it was last year. And we do a little bit different seeding process there, and the biggest difference is we use Scott's Patchmaster to cover over the seed. The reason you want to do that is, is Scott's Patchmaster is the best thing I've found. It's readily available. And if you put a really nice thin layer of that over top of your seed, it'll literally hold it in place like glue. It just sucks it down to the soil and it simulates seed to soil contact, keeps the birds from eating it, retains moisture. It does a lot of things. It's really good stuff. It's just recycled newspapers and other junk, but it works great. The key is though, is if you use Patchmaster is to keep it thin. The last thing to talk about is mowing. You're gonna go ahead and mow like normal. I mean, don't worry about the grassy. Mow at three and a half to four inches and just go ahead and mow normally. Go ahead and mulch though. Go ahead and just put everything back in. It'll just help cover up the seed a little bit more and get more organic material injected directly down into that soil. 